Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're coming to you on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and YouTube for playback. I have a camera recording YouTube for playback in case the Wi-Fi fees would crash. We'd still be able to record. Today in our ministry, we do what we call a midweek miracle sermon. And we come before you and the world live and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've been sharing moments from the mountain which include times we spent um, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in fasting and prayer. Every first 31 to 40 calendar days of a new year we come, we fast and pray and we journal and we write in our journal and in our journal um, we write down what we believe the Lord is saying to us daily and as a leader of the ministry I'm in a position to where I can share some of the stuff that God right gives me during my fasting time so I've been sharing since we came out of the fast in February uh, moments from the mountain and we've been speaking on what the Lord was speaking to me during that time some of the things I can share some of the things are, are for me personally as I um, enrich my relationship with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so we've been sharing those in our journal, like I said, this is my journal, and uh, we've been on one seven because we've been talking about seeing the kingdom, and there was about ten pages of notes on that. So we've been sharing that uh, for the past few weeks. If you missed any of the previous sermons, you can go back either on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube and catch up on what you may have missed out on if you feel like you need to see what was said previously. Today is 3-3-2021 and like I said we'll be sharing today we'll be, we'll be finishing up the scene of the kingdom seeing the kingdom of God we'll be uh, finishing it up today I'm going to go back and go over a few of the things that I said previously and then we'll be going forward it's so important as we walk this walk talk this talk and live this life this journey with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we allow ourselves to constantly and continuously be perfected. And the way we're perfected is that we receive the engrafted Word of God and we let go of the ideologies and, and all the things that we've picked up through our human nature. Let us pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you for allowing us to be amongst the land of the living, Father God. You didn't have to do it, but you did. We know, Father God, those of us who are mature and understand that there are a lot of things that our body needs to function on this earth and in this natural state. And it's by your grace and your mercy that we're allowed to still be here, Father God. You kept us in our right mind. Our brain is working the way it should. Our heart is pumping blood in the name of Jesus. Veins, blood is flowing through the veins. These are things that we should not take for granted, but we do. So we take a moment to thank and praise you, Father God, for allowing us to still be here, still be alive. I pray, Father God, as we begin to share the words of eternal life, Lord Jesus, that if there's somebody out there who have, uh, are hopeless or, or just run out and are tired, that, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that the words of life would catch them, Father God. We know that it's when we are at our extreme lowest, Father God, is when you can do your greatest work in us, Father God, because we're humble and we're open to receive. I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Like I said, we'll be refreshing from 1-7-2021 when I was on my first fruits fast. And we're going to be sharing, um, this will be the last time because I'm about on my last page of notes concerning seeing the kingdom of God. Now during this time, God had impressed on my heart severely during the fast. That's why I got like 10 pages of notes on this one subject. How important it was... <clears throat> for a person to be born again something that I believe that's, that's looked over when we come into the faith you know even being raised in a Christian home when I got to the age of accountability when I was conscious of the things that I was doing wrong morally or, or spiritually when I got to that point when I started making decisions did and choices they started being counted against me sort of say 
The Bible in James 4.17 says, He did enough to do good and do it not to him it is a sin. So when you know you're doing something wrong and you consciously do it anyway, it's a sin to you. So we need to understand how the Bible says we need to come out of sin nature and to start living according to the word of the living God so we can receive the things that God has for us. I'm going to go back and start where we started, which was in John 3. We're going to read part of verse 5. There was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. So they realize and recognize that he is a teacher that come from God because they said except God be with him they he wouldn't be able to do the things that he was doing so it's important that we realize and recognize the exceptions that God placed in our lives that we can do and operate in the things that God has called and created us to do we know except God be with us we know the state of this world and how life would be Except God. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And what the Lord had impressed on me so hard when I was, that was revealed to me during uh, this fasting time is that there are a lot of blind people a whole lot of blind people. You ever hear somebody, you, you're trying to explain something to somebody and their face is like, looking like, I don't understand what you're talking about. And you come to the realization that they're not seeing it the way you're seeing it. You know, we that live by faith, now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. We that live by faith, we see things different than we did when we was lost and we was walking in, in blindness. When I was a person who was living, living after the lust of this world and the care and the vanity of my mind, um, I didn't see things in the spiritual. I didn't realize the things I was doing was, was, was hurting my chances for eternal life because I didn't see them that way. And like I said, I was raised in a Christian home, but it wasn't until I got to the age of an accountability that I am accountable for my actions as far as how I, what I'm doing against God. I believe it was David that said, it is thee that I have sinned against. He made it clear that he sinned against God. You know, we trespass against our neighbor, you know, and we do things against our neighbor. We sin against the only sinless person that ever was born and lived and crucified and rose again, which is in the person of Jesus Christ. So we sin against God because he paid for our sins. He paid for our sins to be washed away so that we could have a, a right for, to eternal life. So we sin against God. So he says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So when a person cannot see faith, now faith is some things over them, when they can't see the things that they're doing is detrimental to the kingdom of God, which we know obviously is heaven. When you cannot see those things and you're doing things, that, that's detrimental to your to you getting to heaven they need to be born again that's the best way to say it um, you know I, I, I doing outreach and, and, and traveling and talking to people when when people make choices to do this that and the other um, their choices are generally based off what they want right in that moment they're not thinking about eternity well, I want this, so I'm going to do this. Well, I want instant gratification, so I'm going to make that choice to have that right now. I want to feel good right now. They're not thinking about when they die or, or the penalty of their actions so often. And it's important that when you are born again, you realize that now you're seeing a kingdom that wasn't available to you because you wasn't thinking about that. That's why in Romans, it, it, it lets us know that we need to renew our mind. You know, when you get born again, your mind is renewed to the fact of the things that you're choosing to do and why you're choosing to do them. You know, I share share with 
um, women who, who, who attempt to try to talk to me often, I said, I don't believe in premarital sex. And they look at me like I'm crazy because I, I, apparently that's not a, a common act in this in this world we live in. You know, it's like something people do. Even people will say to me, it was like, well, I need to know what my husband or wife is like before I marry him. I can't marry somebody. I don't know. Well, guess what? Like I said in James 4, he didn't know to do good and do it not to him or to sin. You, there, <laughs> ain't no sampling. You know, that, that, that's not something that we, we as believers in, in, in their mindset, they're struggling. Like, there's no way I can marry somebody that sexually I didn't. Well, it's because you've, you've placed sex and lust above the love of God. And when you do that, you're not conscious of the kingdom of God. You're just thinking about your instant gratification or your temporary human life. But when you're born again, all those things factor in. You're thinking like, I don't want to do anything to risk missing the kingdom. John 3, 3 again, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born, and he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus saith unto him, he replied to Jesus, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So that's the natural mindset. And that, that little right there proves that Nicodemus cannot see what Jesus is speaking about concerning the spiritual things. Because the first thing Nicodemus said is like, how can I be born again when I'm old? Can I go back up and come out of them? No, obviously not. You know, there ain't going to be no 200 and I'm 270 some pound, six foot seven baby. <laughs> you know, you will kill a person trying to come out of a person that big. I think the only thing have babies that big is elephants and probably hippos, but you know, can't no human go back up in their mother's womb and come back out again. That's not born again. That's a natural mindset. And Jesus is trying to help him see in the spirit, but there's a reason why Nicodemus cannot see in the spirit. Verse 5, Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So he made it clear to him the difference between what he was talking about and what Jesus was talking about. Nicodemus still didn't get it yet. We're not going to get into that. You know, you read on your own time if you want to in John 3. And Jesus explained to him exclusively the difference between the spirit and the flesh. But it's so important that we're talking about seeing the kingdom of God. If you're a person and you're in a place where you can't see things that God is saying, you need to be born again. That's basically the sermon in a nutshell. When you can't see what God is saying, what the word is saying, when you cannot see that, you need to be born again. Ain't no use in beating yourself up. Don't make yourself feel inadequate. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. He wasn't just an average person who went to the synagogue on the Sabbath. He was a ruler. He was somebody that people looked to for answers. And here he is. Here he is clueless. But Jesus helped him understand what he needed to do to be able to see what he needed to see. So often, we as believers, we get upset. When somebody is trying to correct us or help us, because we feel like we ought to know everything. That's the flesh. There's not a preacher, apostle, bishop, chief apostle. Um, there's no not anybody on the face of the earth that knows everything there is to know about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's too much. He's too vast. You know, I visited a, a fellowship last last week, last weekend, and, I, and, and me as a leader in, in ministry, I try to always go with the with the uh, mentality that I want to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So I don't focus on where it's going to be a male preacher, a female preacher. I try my heart with the focus on the music because, uh, truth be told, some people just cannot sing. I try to focus on the style of music because I'd rather not hear country gospel if I have a choice. You know, because I don't allow these things to get in the way of, of what I need to hear. If my steps were ordered to that place, there's a word for me. And I want to be able to hear that word by not allowing my flesh to dictate who's delivering the word. It's so important. You know, there are people right now who feel like if their pastor or their minister or their preacher is not giving a word, then it's not a word from God. And that, that's very sad. Because the, the, the kingdom is too vast for that. God is too big. You know, he uses anything and everything to speak to his creation, which is us. But when you fix yourself to only hear from one or the other, you're going to miss out on the kingdom. Like when we used to call it back in the day, you're local. 
You're never going to be national, international. You're just going to remain local. And the kingdom is too big for that. So we need to grow up and mature and realize that God is not a man. God is a spirit and we that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the spirit can speak exclusively through anybody and everybody at any time. I remember our missionary team was going to New Orleans and we got to, was we in, was in Bill Street, I think, Memphis. I, I can't remember exactly where we was at. It's been a while. It's, it's been years. And um, I didn't know which way the Lord wanted us to go. I was a leader and I was like, Lord, you know, I was praying. I was like, which way would you have us go? Because we was literally trying to have our steps be ordered to where we can share the gospel with Jesus Christ on this trip, during this trip. We didn't want none of this trip to be in vain. We wanted to witness to people and share gospel with people the whole way down. And so we got to a place where I didn't know where to go, so I just sat still. And we found ourselves in front of like a, a, a bus bench where people sit and wait for the bus. And there was a person, I believe, from his appearance, uh, was on drugs. And I said, um, I asked him, I said, where are the Christians at? And he pointed and said, they got a place down there. <laughs> and we ended up staying at a missionary place um, where they train missionaries. And it's, it was awesome, you know, because... You know, I just, I knew, I just asked God what to do, and God answered through that vessel. Midpoint, in fact, that God can speak through anybody or anything to speak to you when you've got a kingdom mentality. But when you make yourself think, well, I can only hear from this person, or I can only receive from that. I, I know people like that. Well, I heard people tell me, oh, you're not my pastor. Uh, I'm part of the body of Jesus Christ. And I'm in the kingdom of God, so my position is solidified throughout the entire body, not just in your fellowship, your denomination. So when I speak, I'm not speaking just to black, white, green, yellow, male, female. I'm speaking to he, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now, if you're a part of the church, you should be able to hear what the Spirit is speaking to you exclusively through anybody, especially a preacher who's speaking from the word of the living God. That's the difference between the kingdom of God and people who have are blind and I've not been born again. I'm gonna run through some of these scriptures again just to refresh. Like I said, this is our last time speaking on seeing the kingdom of God. And let me say this real quick because I like to help people understand the simplicity of what God is trying to help them understand. If you've ever been a person that's been temporarily blinded or if you're a person who wears glasses and can't see without your glasses and you know what it's like not to be able to read something or see something, that, that's how it is in our life when we're not allowing God to be God in our lives. We have to make sure, as we are believers, that we are continuously seeing things in a, with a kingdom mentality. Or else, your non-belief is what causes you to be blind. If somebody tells you something, you either choose to believe it or not believe it based off of whatever information you have concerning what they're saying. Well, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And you think like, well... It's a possibility that that could happen. But when it comes to the word of the living God, now faith, like I said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith will allow you to see things that there's no evidence of. No one living right now has ever met Jesus Christ in the flesh. No one, nobody, nobody living right now has ever met him. So the Bible says, blessed are those who have not seen, but believe. So we're believing something we have not seen. So that's the beginning of your kingdom seeing, your kingdom mentality. We're believing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is everything he said he was, is, and is to come. Now our task become is gaining knowledge of who he said he was, is, and is to become. Because if we don't, that's how people get tricked. I have people come to me all the time and say, well, they said this and they said that. I'm just like, well, is it in the Bible? I don't know. Well, that's, what the, that's where your problem is, is that because in the temptation in Matthew chapter 4 Satan tried to deceive Jesus by twisting the word he was using word but he was twisting the word literally but when you don't know it you can be tricked because you're blind but when you know what it says nah that's not right that's like when somebody will read a scripture or quote a scripture I'm like what verse of the Bible is that and well I read the homeboy version that I got from the corner store I'm like what like somebody wrote and that's, that's what's going on right now there's so many different versions of the Bible some of the stuff has lost its original meaning because they've twisted it up so much. And I believe that's a trick. Hebrews 11.1, 1, once again, now faith is the substance. How many people want some substance? Everybody I know wants substance. They want food, they want clothes, they want cars, they want, they want stuff. There's not a person 
in my in my Rolodex or in my phone book or in, in, in my in my life that don't want substance. Everybody I know wants some substance. And the Lord is letting us know now faith is the substance of things. So by faith, you can receive the promises that God spoke through and worked through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I tell people all the time, especially people who try and reject the Old Testament, the Old Testament or, or where the tangible blessings were spoken over the people of God. I don't believe in the Old Testament. That was then, this is now. Well, I don't know how you're going to get the things that God said you're going to have because that's when he spoke them. Because when Jesus came, he made it clear that God is a spirit. We did worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth. Because Jesus Christ gave us spiritual things. Like he told Nicodemus, flesh is flesh, spirit is spirit. He brought things that were spiritual. All the fleshy stuff was spoken in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament. They had to operate in, in principles to receive the promises. So when you reject that, you find yourself working 8 to 80 blind, crippled or crazy to the bare knuckles, get no rest, missing out on all the promises of God because you're trying to do it in and of yourself. John 1.18 says, No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared Him. Some people are confused about the fact that when Jesus speaks about the Father and the Father speaks about the Son, that it was He is the Father. Why is He speaking? He's teaching us. That's that kingdom mentality I was talking to. Non-believers will always try and tell you about your God and they don't believe. Your belief, your non-belief condemns you and blinds you to the fact of who Jesus Christ was, is, and is to come. How are you going to try and tell me about something you don't believe in? That's like telling somebody, well, sit in that chair to hold you up, and you look at that chair and the legs all jacked up and crickety and rickety. You're like, I'm not sitting in that seat. I'll end up flat on my butt on the ground. And they're trying to tell you to do something that you see that ain't stable. It's on Christ, the solid rock we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. How a non-believer going to tell me they don't believe in what I believe in? That's why believers ain't got no business believing and doing what non-believers do. Because once again, you're, in, you're you're coming, being a part of their world. No, we're supposed to bring them into the light, not fellowship in darkness with them. Mark 8, 27 says, And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying, Unto them, who do men say that I am? So often you need to examine yourself and check yourself, especially when you're going through to get to. Hold on, man. Who is Jesus? Why am I dealing with this foolishness? Or more, more or less, why am I dealing with it like this? What, what would Jesus do? Or what did Jesus do? As a believer, we have benefits. Forget not his benefits. We have benefits. We have rights. Yeah, we're going to go through stuff. It, it, it rains on the just as well as the unjust, but we deal with stuff differently. You know, when the, I, I be watching the westerns, I, I, I like westerns and shows sometimes. And even all the way up, this is what's so funny about this point I'm about to make. From the westerns all the way up to the day, what is it about going to the bar and getting a drink to deal with your problems? I, I, I never have, I've never been a drinker, so I really don't get that concept. Is your problems going to go away because you had a drink? Oh, I need a drink. I'm like, what? how could a drink possibly help you <laughs> with a problem? Who wants a temporary fix? Because whenever you sober up, your problem will be sitting there waiting on you. You ready to go? I've been waiting on you to get done. Now you got an extra problem because now you're drunk or your liver got issues. <laughs> and the Bible says don't be drunken with wine. It's amazing how the flesh in the world will try to create a problem from a problem. And then they want to they want to charge you to fix your problems, which can't fix your problems because they're the ones that gave you the problems in the first place. Simply said that I'm going to give you the flu to fix the flu. <laughs> the world is crazy. It's amazing when you start to see stuff in a kingdom view, how the world and their lives are revealed. Sometimes people say, Sean, how did you know that? I'm like, well, when you look at Jesus and study Jesus, and you understand the authenticity of the creation of the author and the finisher of this world and creation, stuff that's not real is it, so easy to, to see and, and, and so easy and obvious. It's like, you know, I heard a jeweler say one time real quick that he knows fake diamonds as soon as he see them on a person's finger. Cubic zirconia is, he says he could spot them just like that. And somebody said, well, how can you spot a, a fake diamond so easily and so quick? He said, because my whole life and my father, I was trained to work with real diamonds. So I know what a real diamond, the qualities of a real diamond. That's how we are as believers. As believers, when we spend time with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we read the word, we pray in the Holy Ghost, we, we fellowship, we do the things that we're supposed to do. When you come up against somebody who say they're a believer, but don't have the characteristics of a believer, you recognize, well, I don't know what kind of believer you are, but we don't do that. 
You can't do those things and say you're of us, the body of Jesus Christ, because Jesus, he forbade those things. He did not do those things. Those things keep us away from him. So Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Because he was checking them as to what, how they should examine themselves according to who he was. Because he says, who do men say that I am? And then he goes on and the scripture says, well, who do you say I am? You're with me. Who do you tell people as a witness who I am? And see, you'll hear people bash the, the establishment, the church. Well, I ain't going to that church. Them people are faking. I ain't doing this. Man, that's one church out of, out of millions. Yet and still, if your job fire you, you're going to get another job. If you wreck your car, you're going to get another car. If your clothes were out, you're going to buy some of the clothes. But why is it because you had one bad experience, you're going to give up on the whole thing? You just don't want to be. You don't want to be right. And you use that as an excuse. Romans 10.10, 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Heart and mouth. Your heart and your mouth. Excuse me. With the heart believeth, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Confess and profess. Bible speaks exclusively, especially when you come into the kingdom, how, what, how you, your speech is supposed to change. I was never a big person who used profanity under any, any in every circumstance. So me coming over to, 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 to the faith, it, I didn't I, the only thing I really had to clean up is the dirty jokes. You know, I used to be a person, we talked about stuff. You know, me, I, I, I've loved, always loved laughing and being a comedian style person, but I had to clean up my act. I had to clean it up. I can't say that I'm in the kingdom of God and I'm talking crazy and, and just joking about stuff that is not really necessarily funny. Or it is funny, but it shouldn't be funny because I have a kingdom mentality now. And you don't want to necessarily offend nobody. And I know believers who say, well, when God cleaned up my language, well, God ain't going to be the one to clean your language. He gave us the power and authority to get right. And all you're really doing is teaching people around you to speak the way you ain't supposed to speak, and you're not looking like the person you said you are. At some point, you just got to make up your mind, I am not going to use those words. I don't know why profanity is such a hard thing for people. No one should be able to get you mad to the point where you get out of character. That's why the Bible says anger. You can be angry, but don't sin. And this is how you can examine yourself. There should be some growth. There should be some change. You know what I'm saying? Who wants to go to a job and never get promoted or never gain no money or never... You're there to gain, like school. Who wants to go to school and stay in the same grade and never advance? It should be the same thing in your spiritual walk of God. You should want to grow in the way you can... <laughs> in the way you know you're growing is the fact that you don't do the things you used to do. I don't do the things, I don't think the way I used to do. Now I have a kingdom mentality. And I know I'm growing because, yeah, they, they still try to tempt me to do it, but I have a drawback now. Now I can say, okay, hold on. I'm not doing it. I'm